In the memory of injustice, in the memory of Feng Li, in the memory of all victims of police brutality, in the memory of a tragedy translated to travesty, in the memory of a planted gun, conspiracies and sons lost over the sun. The videotape was lost and they thought it was all done. They were wrong. Three shots in the back, five shots on the ground, one sun down, bleeding on the round. In July 2006, Feng Li and some of his friends were riding bikes um, over on the, in North Minneapolis, close to where they live, actually at City View Elementary School. Um, officer, Minneapolis Police Officer Jason Anderson and a state trooper um, saw the young men biking around. And drove towards them because the car said they apparently saw them pass things to each other. They actually ended up, uh, a, a, a short chase um, entailed, um, Feng Li was kind of singled out as his other, other friends dispersed on bike or on, on foot. And uh, the squad car actually ended up, I think, I believe, ramming into Fong's, Fong's bike. Fong then took off running. So Fong Li was being chased by Officer Jason Anderson, and Jason Anderson pulled out a gun, and the surveillance camera caught Fong Li uh, running ar around the school, and it seemed like he was unarmed because it didn't see look like there was a gun in his hand. Um, but uh, Jason Anderson saw Jason Anderson shooting him, and so what it showed after math was that Feng Li was shot in the back three times and then on the ground five more times. The police department, Jason Anderson, um, had, had maintained the round and saying that the reason why they initially stopped and pursued Feng Li was because they said that he had a gun. They, um, Anderson said that he was shooting Feng Li because uh, he, his life was threatened because Feng Li had a gun on him and was going to shoot him. Um, and um, this is important because the, the gun that was actually found next to Fung Li's body was, um, at, first of all, it had no, uh, no uh, DNA evidence on it, no kind of trace evidence. There's no blood, no fiber, no fingerprints, no smudges on the gun. The gun also wasn't turned into evidence until 72 hours after he, after he died. Um, and moreover, the gun that was found next to his body um, was stolen in 2004, and the, the previous owner testified that it had been recovered by the police um, and had been held in police custody um, up until then, which highly strongly indicates that, that the gun was planted and that this, that this was a cover-up. His generation are the grandsons of a secret army that sacrificed to save the backs of soldiers and shooting teenagers in the back would never achieve a medal of bravery unless they thought he was a refugee from Southeast. The police pulled over Civics and Toyotas at the rate of heartbeats. In 2009, his family filed a, a wrongful death lawsuit against the city of Minneapolis and specifically um, Officer Jason Anderson. But I know that they, they took the city of Minneapolis to court many times and they lost every single time, but continued pursuing different ways of, um, different ways of finding a path to justice for their son. And so um, it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court uh, made a decision not to hear the case. Moreover, the, the friends that Feng Li was with um, testified in, in court saying that Feng was, was un unarmed, completely unarmed, and d did not have a gun. Uh, there's overwhelming evidence that uh, Feng Li didn't have a gun in his hand. Officer Jason Anderson, um, this guy uh, joined the police force in 2005, so he was a rookie cop at the time that he killed Feng Li. He was just uh, on the force not even a year, I think 11 months. Um, uh, into when, this, when, when, Fung, when Fung was murdered. And Officer Anderson has a history of excessive force, especially towards young people of color. And uh, even there's another case where he kicked an African-American teenager in the head after he had already been handcuffed. Well, I, I, it's, it's, it's incredibly important to continue to, um, to, to, to spread education um, specifically about this piece. Um, so at the end, that you know, ultimately, hopefully, one day, this, these instances won't will not be happening anymore. When you, when a situation like this doesn't get justice, you know, um, there's a sense of 
you know, how can we succeed in a society that is stacked against us as Asian American, you know, and <clears throat> so, or just someone of color or just someone that lives, a young person that lives in the Minneapolis area. And whether it's, you know, through uh, the court system eventually or whether it's through people and community members, individuals feeling empowered and saying, you know, we've had enough and, and, and demanding for some, some real change. In, in terms of the way, um, in terms of the way the way things are done, I think it's it's in, it's incredibly important to to keep fighting. We will not be silent to sirens of cyanide on our side of the city because it's not injustice for just us. There's a whole history of conspiracy. Stand with me because the next tragedy could be in your family. So we suffocate from this case, skeptical to breathe, and only justice will give us the oxygen to be treated like human beings in the memory of injustice, dedicated to the family of Fung Lee and all victims of police brutality, rest in peace.